Thank you so much for tuning to our ministry today. We believe that God is going to bless and speak to us in a very special way. Each week, we try to bring you an inspiring message that will challenge, that will also encourage and build your faith to become more effective in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose of our message is to bless and to bring encouragement and equipping for every believer to do the work of the ministry. That's our goal. And so to that end, today we're going to talk about the core values that every believer in Christ should have. What are those things that are non-negotiable in the life of a believer? Those values that are foundational, those values that are fundamental to the core of your being as a Christian believer. And so we're going to look at uh, the core values. What are core values? Core values are things that we cherish. Core values are those basic principles that we will not compromise. And these are core values that we are even willing to lay our lives for. The classic example is the life of Jesus Christ himself. He had certain core values in his life that really prompted him to lay even his life as a sacrifice for us. And that's why Mel Gibson, the producer of the movie, called the movie The Passion. The Passion of Christ. And how appropriate is that? The passion of a person is birthed out of the core values that are fundamental to that person's life. These core values are instilled into our hearts as we continue to read the Bible, study the Bible, as we pray more, and as we build that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis, we really come to establish those core values. During the last few years, there has been much talk about the importance of of core values, especially by those specialists who are consultants, would urge individuals, businesses, corporates, offices, and even churches and mission-based ministries to have core values. And it is those core values that helps us to prioritize and to focus on the most important agenda of our life or our mission or our ministries. Without a core value, we do not have a vision or a mission to aim at. And so five years ago when we started LifeBridge Worship Center here in Chandigarh, God really spoke to us and we really spent time in God's presence asking Him to show us those core values. And those core values we will not compromise. Those values are those principles that helps our church achieve our mission and the vision of the church. And so today as you listen to the word of God, I pray that you will really think about the most important core values that are essential for your faith, life and walk with God in this world. And in, perhaps if you are heading an organization or you are running a business or you are running a ministry or whatever it is, maybe you are a pastor of a church, think about those core values of your mission or your ministry or the church or the business that you are involved in. And I pray that these biblical principles that I share with you today will help you frame that core values for your life. Perhaps you already have a core value that you have established. And so in the light of God's word, it is an opportunity for you to evaluate and assess to see whether those values that you have is biblical core values that are helping you to achieve your destiny in God. And so today, my thought and my message is taken from the life of a mighty man of God who laid the foundation for establishing the church that God used to build his church. And his name is Peter. Peter was an incredible man. He was a failure in life and yet because of his attitude to change, because of his attitude to repent and come back to God and because Jesus Christ himself reached out to him personally after the resurrection to come and prove to him that Jesus is indeed the Lord and Savior and Peter became a revolutionized man after that encounter with Jesus. And so it is that encounter and experience with Jesus that changed Peter. And then you see Peter's life revolutionized. Even as Peter writes 1 Peter and 2 Peter, he pours out his heart and his intent and reveals to us those core values that made him the mighty man of God that he became. 
And so as you read 1 Peter and 2 Peter, one of the words that Peter uses is the word precious. And somehow the word precious have been attached to a feminine kind of a vocabulary in today's society. And so a lot of men don't like to use the word precious. In the light of God's word, that you are not going to compromise, that you're not going to give in to any circumstances. Doesn't matter whether it is persecution or whether it is sufferings in life or whatever might be the challenges or difficulties that you are going through. Those core values that you hold as precious in your life is going to stay there and sustain you to reach your destiny and reach the other side. And so let's look at Peter and see what those core values in Peter's life that are precious to him. First, when Peter talk about his core values, he talks about his faith. Peter declares his faith as precious. And so the first core value for Peter that sustained him in his mission and in his life was his faith in God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, it says like this, These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And so Peter is saying here, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. In verse 6, he talks about the anticipated sufferings and trials and challenges for a believer. And then he goes on to say that if you have got a faith that is unshakable, if you have got a faith in your heart that is unmovable as your core value, then you can come through any challenge or any struggles in your life. I have seen people of God who have conquered mountains in their life and I have found out the secret of the success in their life is their unshakable faith in the living God. My mother is a classic example of their unshakable, unmovable faith in God. Even though circumstances were very difficult for her and, and challenging times came in her life, she has proved to us and to our church and to our community that if you have an unshakable faith in God, you can overcome every obstacles in life. Amen. And so today is faith your core foundation? Is faith your core value that you will not compromise? Or will you surrender your faith in the moment of your challenge? Recently, when I saw the beheading of the Egyptian Coptic Christians who were slaughtered by the ISIS, I saw the unshakable faith of those valiant giants who laid their lives. And I thank God that the video actually gone on to show their faith confessions in the last moments of their life in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our faith that will help us to endure every pain and every struggles. Jesus had faith in the Father God. He had faith in God that he is going to come out victorious at the end. And so looking to the end, looking to the future, Jesus endured the cross. And we cannot give up. We cannot surrender or we cannot quit along the way because that's not God's plan. God wants us to finish the race that is set before us. And how can we finish that race? We need to have enduring faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ who called me is able to perfect and finish the work that he began in me. And so today, may I encourage you to have faith like Peter, an unmovable faith, that, let that be your core value in your life. And so here in verse, Peter is reminding us, these have come, the sufferings, the trials, and the challenges, the problems, the good times, and the bad times, they have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith be greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire may result in the praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Hallelujah. And that's why we go through challenges. That's why we go through difficulties. That's why we have to carry our cross because Jesus is going to be revealed. And when our faith is tested and we come out on the other side of this challenge, hallelujah, God is going to be revealed and his glory is going to be revealed through your very life.
Is your faith priceless? As Peter would say here, that I will no longer surrender my faith for a few coins. I will no longer surrender my faith for any temptation of soldiers or any military or any government or any society or any radical groups that may come against us. Times like these and the times ahead of us are going to be times where we are going to be challenged, where our faith is going to be challenged. And may I encourage you to anchor your life in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, we read, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And all those great giants whose names are written forever, for eternity to read, in the book of Hebrews, they were all men and women who were known for their faith. And so it's not our education, it's not our family or your position in ministry or how good you are as a person that counts. What counts is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the second core value to Peter? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So what is it that Peter values here? Peter says, I value the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That he realized that he was redeemed, he was purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. The blood without any blemish, the blood without any defect was shed for us. The blood of Jesus Christ is core value to Peter's life. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ. No enemy can stand near the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why the old song goes like this. There is power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen? There is power in the blood of the Lamb. We need to take authority over the principalities, over the powers of darkness that are coming to attack us, our families, our children, or our churches, or our communities, and stand firm in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Peter says, and know this, that you've been redeemed by the precious blood. The song writer goes on to talk about the old rugged cross. And how precious is that old rugged cross. And it says, the precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no other force. There is no greater power than the blood of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ is still alive. The blood of Jesus Christ is still speaking. The blood of Jesus Christ is still working and transforming individuals, communities, and people. The most radical people of all, the blood of Jesus is able to change and bring into God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's value the blood of Jesus Christ. The third thing that Peter values in his life is the person of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 2, verse 4, it says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. Who is this precious one that Peter is talking about? He's talking about Jesus Christ. Rejected by men, but accepted and chosen by God the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus is precious to us. And so we need to appropriate, we need to emphasize on the person of Jesus Christ. That we are not going to compromise on the uniqueness of this Savior that came to this world. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is chosen and he is precious. Let's look at verse 6 of chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Here Peter says, for in the scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion. A chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And so if you put your trust in the person of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will never be put to shame. 
That's what I've seen down through the history of the world. Those who have followed the Lord Jesus Christ have never been put to shame. They have taken the word of God and those that have fought for the kingdom of God and lived for his work and his principles have never been put to shame. Their generations have been blessed by God. Hallelujah. If there is anything of prestige and proud for me to talk about today is because I have chosen to follow this Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has never allowed me to go into shame during the last 30 years of my ministry and my life. It's all because I have chosen to put my trust in this Savior called Jesus Christ. And so today's world, there is a lot of challenge for us to compromise on our belief in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are so many established institutions, even in our country of India, that teaches pluralism. And, and Jesus is one among many gods and that, you know, he's like anybody else out there. And you know, let me tell you that Jesus is not like one among many. He is the only one. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. Hallelujah. Even Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, urges his followers to seek the truth and find the truth. Obviously, he's saying, I'm not the truth, but he's saying, look for the truth, seek the truth, and you will see the truth, and you will find the truth. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. And the Bible says, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Who is this truth? Jesus Christ. He is unique. Hallelujah. His virgin birth is unique. Hallelujah. His crucifixion and his resurrection is unique. The fact that he is coming back to this world again, as promised in the scripture, is very unique. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is unique. Let's believe in the unique Jesus Christ who said he is the only way. No one comes to the Father God except through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so how strong is your core value in Jesus Christ? Do you count him more precious than anything else in this world? First Peter chapter 2, verse 7, Peter goes on to say like this, Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. He is precious. Millions and millions of people around the world passionately worship, adore, and live for this Savior, Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is to know a Savior who is the God of all. That we do not worship a God who is just for a group of people, a particular caste, or a state, or just one nation, but we have a savior. Hallelujah. As it says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his son, Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. That's the power of the savior, Jesus Christ, that he is the Lord of all. He is loved and worshipped by every tribe, every tongue, and every nation in the world. And so as a believer, as a Christian, you can go to any country in the world. You will be accepted. You have a family. You have people who will receive you into their home and give you a meal or a place to sleep simply because we are part of the one great family of God. And in the body of Christ, there is no Jew, there is no Greek, there is no Gentiles, there is no Indians, there is no Africans, there is no Americans. We are all part of the one great family of God. How exciting it is to know this unique Jesus Christ. Peter says, to me, this Jesus is precious. Four core values. Peter valued God's promise, the word of God. Peter values the scripture, the word of God, the promise of God as more important than anything else in his life. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. 
And so this is what Peter is talking about. The word of God, the inspired word of God, both the Old Testament and the New Testament are the inspired word of God. Through these, he has given us his very great precious promises. And so Peter is saying that this word of God is precious to him. That he is passionately loving this word of God. That's why we read even in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, God speaks to the people of Israel, the children of God in Israel and says, hide these words in your heart. Hallelujah. Teach them to your children. Talk about them during the day. Talk about them while you are walking. Talk about this word of God while you are sitting. Because you consider this to be precious. The word of God needs to come into our heart. In some places I see as, they, as you enter the home, yeah, there is a glass case with a huge Bible open at the entrance of their house. But I never see anybody in that house, family prayer. There is a time to read the Bible or study the Bible or talk about the word of God. Many people have now got habituated to leave the Bible in the car and, and pick it up when they're going to the church. And so in the car, because of the heat, I have seen the leather found that the binding of the Bible has really opened up because of the heat. And, and it's very hard to keep it closed. You see, the Bible is not something that we keep it in the car and pick it up to come to church on Sunday morning. But it's something that we need to read on a daily basis and make it part of our daily routine. Meditate on it. Passionately value the word of God, the promises of God. The Message Bible translates this very portion of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 as the awesome and trustworthy promises as tickets to participate in the life of God. Our tickets to heaven. If you want to have an eternal life, this is your ticket. This is the promise of God to take you to that place of eternal life. And how appropriate it is that we once again get back to the word of God. The word of God is able, as we read here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, the last part he says, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And so if you hold on to this promise of God for now, you not only receive your eternal life, but now here on this world, the Bible says you will escape the corruption of the evil world. We can be untouched by the corruption of this world. We can live a blameless life. We can live an uncorrupt life because the word of God preserves us. The word of God purifies us to live a corrupt, free life. Hallelujah. Let's embrace the word of God. Let's make that as the core value in our life. And so we have seen Peter's valuing. Number one, he valued his faith. Number two, Peter valued the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three, Peter valued the person of Jesus Christ. And number four, Peter valued God's promises. And so we see Peter valued four things as his core value. Number one, he valued his faith, that nothing is going to take away his faith. Number two, Peter valued the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three, Peter valued the person of of Jesus Christ, the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. Number four, Peter valued God's promise. You see, everything that we have of material things in this world, many times we count them more precious than anything else. And people fight for it, people kill each other for it, and people are involved in all kinds of jealousy, hatred, and division, and disunity over the things of this world that divides us, that destroys us. They all have a shelf life. Your shirt has a shelf life. The car that we drive has a shelf life. The house that we live in has a shelf life. And after a period of time, they all get worn out. They all get ruined. They all get damaged. But there is one thing that will never be taken away from us. That's our God. He is our reward. He is our reward. And God never changes. He never changes. He, become, he never become old and he never let us go. And so we need to hold on to God as our most important thing in our life. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And so even as God adds things to our life, 
let's not forget our God. In today's society, somehow we have lost our love for God. We have lost our passion for God. And we have compromised our values. We have degraded ourselves into the likeness of the people of this world. God's heart is broken for the world that he looks down upon. But today God is speaking to us to once again realign ourselves with his priority. Let's make our faith strong in God. Let's continue to believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's believe in the person of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's believe in this word that he has given to us. These are the things that will sustain us and carry us forward into our destiny. And so today, if God has spoken to you, would you make a prayer in your heart and say, God, help me. Help me to stay strong. Help me to stay with my anchor deeply grounded in you, God. Help me not to take my eyes off you. Lord, I want to have these as my core values in my life. That will take me to finish my race. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for challenging us once again through your word to really embrace the values that you want us to have in our life. Somehow, Father God, the world has taken us away from those things that are important to you. We ask you to forgive us. We say to you, Lord, that no matter what happens in this world, I want to hold on to you, Lord. I want to hold on to my faith. I want to hold on to the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for me. I want to hold on to the person of Jesus Christ that came to this world. I want to hold on to the promise of your word, O oh God, at all times. So help us all. And may your name be glorified through us. May the person of Jesus Christ be revealed through us and help us to live a victorious, overcomer's life in this world. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So may this be the core value.